All right, in this video, we're going to show you very quickly how to create a site content type in SharePoint Online. Uh, so previously, we showed how to create a site column. And essentially, a content type or site content type in SharePoint is simply a collection of site columns. So if you don't know what a site column is, check out that previous video and make sure that you come here, come back here knowing what a site column is and, and maybe having created one at least for practice purposes. Uh, so now to create a content type, we're basically going to go back to the settings the same way we did for creating a site column, which is we click the gear icon and go to site information, scroll down and select view all site settings. And that gets us to the classic site settings page and under web designer galleries, uh, site columns is where we created a site column. Now we're going to go to site content types. Uh, now there's a lot more you know, to know about content types um, than what we can show in a short video here. So we're going to stick with just showing you how to create one. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about what a site content type is. Um, as I mentioned, a content type is a collection of site columns. So if we take a look at a particular one. So for example, there are uh, they're categorized by grouping. So there are document content types. Um, so let's just take a look at the document content type. This, by, by the way, is the default content type that's used in every document library in SharePoint. So if I click on that content type, we can see that it has a name and a title. So two fields, that's it. Um, if we take a look at some other content types, they're a little more uh, complicated. They include some additional things. So, for example, a <clears throat> let me scroll down and find a something else. Uh, for example, contact. Contact is is one of the oldest content types in SharePoint. It's not really used anymore because it was used with the contact list template that existed way back in the olden days of like SharePoint 2010. Uh, but you can see this has a bunch of columns and essentially these columns all map to values in an Outlook contact. So the, the content type in SharePoint for a contact was built on the content type in the Outlook application for a contact. So last name, first name, email, um, essentially all of the, the, the same values that you can define for a contact in Outlook exist here in this contact contact content type in SharePoint. Um, so And these are all site columns. So essentially they all have to be, every column you want to use in your content type needs to be a site column. Uh, what you can do when you create a site column, if you want to create your own, I'm sorry, your own uh, content type, uh, you'll click the Create button up here. And the first thing you need to do is give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, document with status. So this is, and you can call this whatever you want, your organization document, whatever. I'm just calling it document with status because what I'm going to do and what you do whenever you're creating a site column, or I'm sorry, a site content type is that you start with an existing content type and modify it. So there's always a parent content type, and, and this new content type I'm creating will be a child content type of that parent. Um, and what that really means is that when you make a change to the parent, the child content types will inherit that change. Um, but you can modify the child content type to be different from the parent in, in other ways. Uh, so what we're going to do is select as the parent content type uh, from the document content types group and the specific parent content type will be document. So we're just taking that standard document content type that's used in every document library and then we're going to again we can create a, uh, a different group. In this case I'm just going to leave it as custom content types um, and select OK. And again, you could create a separate group if you wanted to for management purposes or whatever. Uh, so now we have our standard content type. And because it's inheriting from the document content type, we have those two columns. We have the name column and we have the title column. Now, to 
add in the other column that we want, that document status column that I created in the uh, previous video, I need to select add from existing site columns. And here you'll see all of the different site columns that you have to choose from. Uh, there are many, many of them. Uh, in my case, I'm going to use the drop down here to select document management columns, which will only have that one that we created called document status. I just click that and click add. And whenever you're making changes to this, there's this update all content types inheriting from this type. This is sort of that parent child relationship. So right now, this document type we're creating or content type we're creating is a child of the document content type. Um, we can likewise create other content types based on this one. And this setting here essentially says if you're changing this content type, if you're adding columns or removing columns, do you want to update all of the child content types based on this, yes or no? Um, so you do have some flexibility there. It's not always going to push all of those changes down. Uh, I will say don't go too crazy with creating layers of content types because it can get very complicated. So at least when you're starting out, keep it simple only define these when you need to and um, keep them pretty basic and straightforward. All right, so I'm just going to click OK. And now we have our new content type called document with status. And if we scroll down, there's our name, our title, and that document status was a choice field. Um, and it's optional. So essentially, we don't have to provide a value, but we know that that's going to default to a value of new because that's how we define that site column. Uh, so that's it for creating a site content type. Uh, the next video I'm going to show how to now take this new content type we've got and apply it to the two libraries, our documents library, which is where we're going to kind of use as our main document storage, and then a, an archive uh, document library where files will be moved based on them having a status of archived. Uh, so check out that video next.